In this tutorial, we'll take an introductory look at render layers. This is a powerful tool. Okay, let's see. Over here, under this render button tab you see here, if you look down here, right in there, there's this tab you can press for layers, this drop down. Let me widen this up a little bit like this. Now notice what this is here. First of all, basically you have this scene of all these layers right here and this represents it, it's basically exactly like where is this in here let's go out of this mode right here you see these layers that I have set here normally that we're using well notice that they're the same up here Th those two are on and that's on here and to verify that I could just say I could turn this one off by holding shift and I turn that layer off that had those two objects on it and notice it turned it off in here so I'm going to turn it on up here and it turns it off down there. All right, so that just does nothing more than just replicates what you see down in here. All right, and the reason you have things on different layers is maybe maybe I have this scene in the first place, and instead of looking at these spheres, I'll turn that off. I want to look at a cube that I have in the scene. All right, or I want to look at the cube and the spheres. I can put them both on like that. All right, so that's that's just where the objects are in the layer, and also. I have different lights set up in advance. I have, in this case, I'm looking at this one spotlight, illuminating it from the side over here, and I have that light on this layer right here. So if I was to turn that layer off, then there's no light in the scene. But if I have a regular flat light, I could turn this layer on, and I have just a single hemisphere light from above illuminating the scene like this. Or I could turn that off, and I have this light, these lights in here, which are several spotlights, and a point light illuminating the scene. So they all kind of give a different effect. Or I could, of course, put them all in the scene like that just to check my lighting. And that works when you're building your model like this. But now, however, when you want to, if you want to test run a, a rendering, then sometimes renderings are really, you know, time consuming. If you're ray tracing it, and you have a lot of glass in the scene and it's high resolution and you have lots and lots of objects. You don't necessarily want to be able to, you don't want to have to render everything at once. I mean, render everything all the time just to see the results of maybe how this green sphere looks. Maybe you just want to rep render some of it. So you kind of replicate it with it over in this layer here by doing rendering. So maybe, maybe I'm just going to replicate it exactly right now by pressing this layer and this layer and this layer and now when I render I'm going to press F12 and I render that's exactly what it renders alright but now let's take out let's put on this layer and this layer like that and let's render it and see what happens well nothing happens here because it's not replicated you no notice how they're not balanced between the two but if I turn this one on and the cube is now in the scene because this is my unrendered scene here you can see it right there the cubes in the scene but the spheres are also in the scene but on the render layer I don't have it selected so now when I press render this here only the cube gets rendered alright even though I say in the scene I have both of them selected or I could do the other way I could just use this as the render layer and turn that render layer off and even though I have both of these in the scene you can see right there if I render it now only the spheres get selected well in the same vein you can do so you can basically mix and match between the two kind of like the same way you do here in the scene but here is actually when you're actually doing the rendering so now in let's try the same thing with the lights now I've escaped it just in, now I'm in my scene view and let's take the cube out of the scene and let's look at two different types of lightings. Well, let me see, we have, first of all, we have that lighting, which was several lights. I'll turn that off for a second. And we have that lighting, which was a side light. So, but now both of them in the scene, like this. But, and if I was to render, see I have no, well, let me see. Now let's turn that one off and turn that on. That's the dull plane light. Now let's render and see what happens. Well, nothing happens because both of these have to be selected into the scene. So if I click that and render it, it only renders it with the flat lighting, even though I have these set as part of my real scene, as you can see right in here. 
and because that's still the scene right in here and this is the rendered version over on this side so now if I if I now take this off and just use this then it's only going to render using the light on that layer and let's try that alright so that's the flat light out of that layer that rendered and if I just escape that look at the scene and if I was to just look at the flat light otherwise there it is in texture view like that so it kind of gives you a way to you can kind of render selectively certain lighting certain objects things like that and you can test you could just you can test different ways you might have the same objects duplicated in a different layer with different materials and then you could just selectively bring those materials in I mean those objects in instead and render those so you can kind of test and it saves you a lot of time when you have big scenes full of lots and lots of objects because then you can just selectively take objects out of the scene and render only things that you want all right well I hope that gives you a, just a basic idea of what render layers are good for there's they're much more involved than that but that should help you get started and I'll see you in the next lesson